What's going on guys? Cody from Motorcycle MD. If you like working on your own motorcycle, I'm here to tell you that it is a matter of time before you screw something up. Whether that's breaking a bolt, breaking a connection of a wire, dropping a newly purchased part that shouldn't be dropped, or even leaving something loose and tragically finding out that you did, or in my case, dropping something inside of a cylinder. Did that just fall down? But do not worry, everybody makes mistakes. You are not alone. Even the best of us find ourselves in situations that we have made worse from when we started. The difference is, do you have what it takes to get yourself out of the mess that you've created? Now, specifically in this video, as you saw, dropping something inside the cylinder is no joke. The reason why I feel like this video could be helpful is because this is relatable to many different things, especially when it comes to dropping something in the cylinder, which happens. Whether you have an off-road dirt bike or a four-wheel or a sport quad or any make or model that has the spark plug in the frontmost section of the motor are unprotected and able to get rocks or debris or whatever. When you go to remove spark plugs, it happens all the time. People drop stuff inside the cylinder. Some of them just close it up and send it on its way. Or you can make an even bigger mistake and say you strip the threads out of your spark plug hole or cross thread it or whatever. Not every situation would be the same. Some of them require way more work. But if you're able to come up with a way to make sense to get yourself out of that trouble, then you might just be able to save yourself all the aggravation or frustration of the problem that you found yourself in. If you are new to riding, just bought a bike, or you enjoy working on your own bike, you have found the right channel. We do videos on motorcycle repair and maintenance and project bikes. Being a technician for Honda, I tend to know the techniques and tips and atmosphere of what it takes to do it correctly and consistently so you can save some money on repairs and get the satisfaction of doing it with your own hands. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like that sort of content and be sure to pick up the free course, Rents to Ride Course, 40 plus videos on how to maintenance and take care of your bike on a consistent basis. Things that you should be doing. Things that you can do. In the description below, pick it up. Totally free. My gift to you for just dropping by. That being said, I hope that you enjoyed this transparent video of me doing something so simple, screwing myself into a bad situation, and figuring out how to get out of it. Enjoy! Well, we can actually just take this, since we do have a little bit of room with these, we can clip about a quarter of an inch off and start fresh on that one. Did that just fall down? Did it? Please tell me it didn't just fall down inside the cylinder. Where'd you go? That was so dumb. That was super dumb. Oh no. <laughs> I heard it fall, but not as far as it should have fallen. And I don't see it. <laughs> well, I gotta find that piece. That was so dumb. I mean, it was definitely big enough to fall down in there. I'll need a boroscope to see if I can, if I can find it, which I don't have with me right now. I can't see the front of the piston. I can see down in, but... Well... No longer running this thing. That was really stupid. That was really stupid. I wasn't thinking. Part of me thought it was just gonna... Part of me wasn't thinking. Let's, let's be real. I can't run it until I know for sure that it's not in there anymore. And then I have to figure out how to get it out. Yeah, because I don't want to run it. And then I think it's so freaking hot that it melts to the valve and the valve doesn't close all the way and blah 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 ghost you won't believe what i just did dude <sighs> son of a okay so now we have the fun task of establishing which cylinder uh, maybe maybe i didn't drop anything in you know fingers crossed but the funnest way i can figure to find that would be to bring a fun tool home from the shop it's a little digital video scope it's kind of grainy but it's I mean, it's if you bought anything offline, it's probably what you would get as far as video quality wise, but it's good, right? So standard boroscope, it's got this camera handheld here with the video that you will see. It has this like kind of like a, like an aluminum snake that you can shove down into a hole that's small and it's got a camera on the front of it. Hopefully it's nice and clear, but it's got a little light inside of it too that you can flash out to the left or right, or you can go straight down. We'll probably go straight down and see what we can see with this. I'm hoping that we either don't find a rubber piece or we find one in the cylinder that we need to go after. 
you'll see that we have our light and this is directional so I can like take this and so I'm now I'm looking upside down if I twist the cable itself we can make it upright and we can see exactly where we're at right so we gotta try to keep that and orient it right but that's pretty decent video quality I, I can see good enough to determine what's going on you gotta be careful these are also have a glass tip on them and if you start bashing it around inside of a hole you could crack the camera okay there's the front of the bike there's the backbone so we can come straight down inside and we got our valves open on cylinder one see the top of the piston I don't see anything. Go down in and rotate a little bit. This looks empty, which is good, right? Let's go into cylinder two. Ah, oh, I see. I see some wire. Okay, so I think it's in there. I think it's in cylinder two. Some of the wire from the hose came out, or from the spark plug cap, and there it is, right there. <laughs> There's that, and see that metal wiring in there? Well, obviously we don't want to mess with that. We want to get all that crap out. There's some more over there, see all that? Yikes. But I'm not worried about it. I, I'm, I'm confident that we should be able to get this stuff out of here. But pretty cool picture. I can't get a better shot of the rest of the cylinder, unfortunately. But that's as good as the pictures we're going to get of what we've done. There it is. There's the money shot right there. So, a few options. I was thinking about something like this, a little mechanic's finger. Got like a pipe then that I can open this claw up and grab. Little plunger, pretty, these things have been around forever. But I can get, I can't get it past the threads. So, okay, first idea is gone. So my next plan is that these are equipped with a vacuum port, right, for carb sinking. You got a little Phillips head there and then go all the way across. The butterflies are closed, obviously with the throttle down, they're at idle. So it's gonna be very hard for something to make its way back up into the carb. If I remove that port, right that little Phillips head screw I can shoot direct air down into that which would then throw some turbulence inside of the cylinder too what I am need to figure out now is where that piston is at in its stroke it could be on the compression stroke because there were no valves that were open for the cylinder too like we saw in cylinder one where the exhaust valves were already open that piston that that pistons way too close to the top already for it to be some type of exhaust stroke or something like that. So it could be on its compression stroke, which means the stroke before that, when the piston's coming up, before that, it needs to be on an intake stroke. It's gonna come down, suck things in, with the intake valves open, and then it's gonna come back up to compress that, which means it could be on its way up, or it could be on the power stroke, where it would already have been compressed, and now it's gonna be forced back down. A little turn of the crankshaft would determine that, to see just one in the correct rotation of how the motor turns. We'll be able to get a little bit of a movement out of the piston to see if it's what stroke it's on. If we can get it to where the intake valves are open, ideally I'd like to move the piston only downward so that in case I'm moving it upward, those little wires that we see, the little spark plug wires that have come out of here are not gonna get tucked underneath that piston. I mean, we just don't want that. So any movement downward would be ideal. I don't wanna start spinning this motor through and then it's we're just making matters worse, you know? So if I can blow air into this, let's say the intake valves are open for cylinder two, blow air directly in, it's likely not gonna go backwards. And on this end, where a cylinder two spark plug is, I would have a hose attached right into the spark plug hole. And a attach my shop vac to the other end, duct tape it all up so it's nice strong pull from this one little end and then blow air directly in and see if I can't just capture it as it's tumbling all around in there into this hose. Otherwise I'm pulling the carbs off and I don't want to do that if I don't have to. So that's the next route I think I'm gonna take. Go ahead and pop this off and we can find out which way the motor's 
turning. We'll be able to tell off of the timing plate or if there's a rotor or something here based off of the orientation of the fire and the top dead center mark. So on the plate behind this electromagnetic system, there's a little window here. And I can't get this in the shot, so it doesn't really matter. But I see the T first and then the F in front of it. You have a T marked which indicates top dead center on whatever you're reading, and you have an F mark. It's gonna fire first before it hits top dead center. So because we know the orientation, if the F was back here, which would never happen, it would always be in front of the top dead center, we know that it's gonna spin around, fire first, and then hit top dead center. So we're on a counterclockwise rotation. So we can spin this through here, find out where that cylinder is, see where we're at. So I have this set up in a way. We're gonna turn this through just a little hair to see which way it's heading. So it's a tiny little turn. And that piston's going downward. So that means it's on the power stroke. That means that the it's gonna go down from the power stroke and then the exhaust valves are gonna open up for it to come up to go through the whole exhaust event. So that sucks because there goes that idea. The good thing about the piston going down further is like I'd have more room to like get in and then angle something over. Man, this sucks. Okay. Think, 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 think. So now for my next trick, I got a piece of pretty stout wire. If I look at, think about how the cylinder is, right? So there, there's the cylinder. The wood's the top of the piston. Got some strands hanging out. Okay. If I can get this down with a little flat edge, I might be able to get onto them. At least the strands. You know what I'm saying? So, this might sound crazy, but what if I did something like this? The sketchy part is losing the tape in the cylinder, of course. Sketchy. I don't want to scratch the cylinder up at all, obviously. So we'll cover that tip up, right, right? That'll fit inside down there. Let's say I take another piece and then hold on to that tape so it doesn't come off like that. I mean, spark plug go-getter? 5,000? Let's try it out. All right, test one. Spark plug wire go-getter. And we're just gonna start fishing. Sneak this down in there. I just don't want it to get caught on its way out. That would suck. Okay, we're in. We're on top of the piston for sure. I'm just do a little 360. We covered the tip up, so it's not gonna scratch anything. Yeah, there'll be some residue in there, but if that's even a real thing. All right, let's see what we got. Aha! Got a couple of strands. We got one strand. Okay, let's go fishing again. What if we just fish that rubber piece out right now? That'd be tight. Try to mash something into the duct tape. All right, no luck. Let's look on the camera and see where we're at. I'm go straight down. Oh, look at that piece fitting right there in the middle. All right, we got a piece over on the side. Okay, right over there. We got a piece in the middle. All right, let's keep fishing. I get that piece out. Oh, there's another one right there. So one, it looks like two in that corner. It looks like a little Jesus fish. One, two, three, I'm sorry, four. So that piece, we have four more pieces to get out. This is the silliest thing I've ever done. I wanna get that one right on top. No luck, back in. We'll just freshen up this tape real quick. All right, extractor has been tuned up. Tip is covered. Let's go, baby. Ha uh ha! -huh. All right, we got us one piece of wire. You know you want to stick to it. Nothing. All right, camera time. Still that piece over there in the corner. There's our rubber piece. All the other ones are gone. Okay. So we just got that piece over there, which is a little bit difficult. It's a little difficult to get. It looks so much bigger on this screen, but in reality, they're like 
maybe four millimeters big. Honestly, if you did not have one of these cameras, I don't know what I would tell you. This is no advice given on this because I'm just, they don't teach this in the manual. So we're gonna lower this down a little bit more. There we go. I saw it kind of hook up over on the ledge. All right, fresh tape. I think it's over towards that corner, so. Nothing. Just need one little hit. See where we're at. All right, it flipped over. Now it's over on top of that piece. Looks like there's a wire that wants to come out of there too. You see it? You bastard. That's the one I want to get out. Now we have two more pieces. Awesome. All right. Oh, got that one right there. Oh, looks like I got the one out of that corner. Now there's just that one. I think that one's gone. Can I move it? Oh yes, it's gone. There's no more in the corners. I don't know what that is. <laughs> no idea what that is. What are you? Like a brown piece of poop. Hiya. There it is right there. I need that piece. And then whatever that piece of turd is right there. So now for my next trick, I've given up on the, the duct tape extractor. I'm gonna try to just apply some vacuum with literally using a vacuum. I have this old junk vacuum that I don't care if it gets damaged because I'm gonna just reduce that to here. I have a hose that I've kind of trimmed down. This is getting desperate, but I've done it before. And we're going to feed that into the cylinder and move it all around and see if we can't get really just the particles of stuff out. That's all I want out. The black piece I can deal with that in a minute, but just getting everything else out is what I want. So we know where we're at with the camera. I'm gonna reduce this down with some duct tape and it's probably gonna strain the vacuum doing this, but I don't really care about this vacuum. So let's see if it works. That'd be so sweet if we just sucked onto that little black spark plug wire and just brought it right out. That'd be phenomenal. I'm not counting on it. So, let's do it. Get out. Get out. Oh, it fell off. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I got it. It was literally stuck right to the top. That's phenomenal. I had to take this hose. Look at this. Ridiculous. Put it in the vise and just shave off enough because I, I wanted a big inlet, right? <laughs> shave it down so it would fit down inside. I can't think that works. Let's grab the camera make sure everything's out of there. And that... is a clean cylinder. Oh, no. We still got something right there. Still got a little piece of copper hanging out. Gotta get it out. We'll hit the vacuum with it one more time. I don't see it. It actually worked. It actually worked, that's awesome. Everything's nice and clean. That, whatever that brown thing was, is gone. That is a success. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and joining this video. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time. Cody from Motorcycle MD. Giving you guys quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. See you next time. Later.